Dude, I don't have any snacks today. No snacks. No Snackless. snacks, man. A sad, sad Snackless. situation. Snackless Sally. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had some I, French toast sticks this morning and yeah, a couple mm-hmm. bites of croissant, which you just you just ate a couple of bites. Like of the of the croissant, which yes, I had to take a whole do, detour to go get the croissant. Which, it was like eight bites. bites. No, it was like no, eight bites. <laughs> no, no, it's little eight little mini bites. So um, yeah, um, as we're talking about food, um, making the walk podcast um, episode eleven. We passed the threshold, so we're in the double digits. Uh, episode eleven. We didn't celebrate that very much on episode ten. But, oh, um, yeah, we're we're on one eleven now. Okay, so maybe I can go get a snack to celebrate. After I mean, this. if that makes you happy, that makes I mean, you it happy, will. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love snacks. Oh yeah, I'm sure it will. I'm sure, it will. I love snack. <laughs> Did so, today's um, Amazon Prime Day though? That's really important it is. topic. Did you get Episode anything? Episode 11, July 11th, Prime Day. Yeah. No, I haven't bought anything yet. Um, I have some things in my cart. Um, one you, of the things that you asked me about, um, mm. a microphone. Yeah, I actually got a, a suitcase. A suitcase? You bought one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got one. It's like a, <laughs> it's not a Samsonite, but it's pretty close. Um, but it's a good deal. I think it's like, it was like 150 bucks. It's normally like too Is it much like money. Hard shell or like the soft? Yeah. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. I needed something that I can just, you know, just more convenient. It's hard to get like some like cloth type of, like the one mm-hmm. I have from Target. Um, it had wheels on it, but it only had yeah. two wheels. So it's not enough. I it fell everywhere. Am- apparently still not an adult i don't have like you know regular travel luggage i'm still duffel bagging it you know yeah that's that's, Um, i mean that's cool if you you know you don't carry a lot of stuff but i'm i'm old enough to need options you know mm -hmm. i need extra Mm -hmm. options i need creams and stuff so (laughs) creams and creams and shit all kinds of tonics (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> creams and tonics rub, rub this tonic in yeah. <laughs> oh um, man intro All right. um, making a walk podcast uh, Antoine CJ uh, like I said episode 11 um, we're going to talk about UFC 290 <clears throat> the, first of all before we even jump into it like um Obviously, like, subscribe, all that stuff, but diving right into it, the event as a whole, um, the card as a whole. Um, was it good? What did you think success? about it? Yeah, yeah. Mm, um, it was really dope. Yeah, I felt like from start to finish, it really was because, I mean, there were so many like finishes, like that always helps. Um, but like the big name fights lived up to their big name um and yeah it was just to me it was the best car of the year so far yeah we're only halfway but it was the best car of the year a lot of upsets some i don't even want to talk about but we're gonna have Um, to but all right let's dive in where are we starting from the top from the top from the top top. yeah go ahead alexander volkanovsky defeats good old uh, Yair Rodriguez. Um, my thoughts. I, I I think that obviously we talked about it before. You know, we both were um, emotionally going for Yair, um, but we kind of knew or felt inevitably that Alex was going to, you know, come out on top. I didn't think he was going to come out on top the way that he did. Um, I thought that he would win. I thought that maybe he would stifle him and get a decision. 
I didn't see him getting the finish the way that he did. That's the part that surprised me. Not to say that he wasn't able to, like he didn't have the ability to, but I felt like because of how dangerous Yair is at all times, um, he was going to, you know, play it safe, get the win, get out of there, on to the next. But he felt like he had a point to prove. Um, Up and, I don't know. yeah. I, I think when we recorded last week, my question was, what does Yair have for him? And yeah. I wasn't too convinced. So I went. I mean, what did I say? What did I say, though? When oh, you man, said. I got, I got goldfish what memory. Is, what did you say? I said unpredictability. Oh, and in fact, that's actually what got him in trouble. So, um, or I wouldn't say it got him in trouble. I just think that Volk um, accounted for it um, and made him very mm-hmm. predictable. But um, I actually did not come into this fight with a lot of confidence for Yair. And Volk actually did exactly what I thought initially. But mm-hmm. um <clears throat> yeah, go before ahead. You went into your Yair deep dive. Oh yeah, for before I went to my Yair deep dive, I did. I went back into let's see, what was the last fight I saw? Might have been the Korean zombie fight. Um, mm-hmm. And then I started watching a lot of his interviews. So okay, now I'm invested in <clears throat> in the fighter and his personality. Um, yeah. uh, I think what actually drew me to him, and I rooted for him just a little bit more, um, was. That dude is a straight stoic, and it's not often you see that, right? Like, especially, you know, his background, Hispanic culture. Um, it's almost like like a drastic difference between him and Moreno. Moreno's super playful about things, and even though he seems super nonchalant, um, as far as characteristics go, um, yeah. he's still pretty playful i guess Mm -hmm. but yeah yeah i i I didn't um i also didn't expect him to lose like he did either he did you know shell up and um i get he didn't give up he was hurt so oh yeah he was hurt all right um i mean in the pictures um of his face afterwards definitely tell the story he he was he's getting pieced up in there um and Volkanovski broke down the fight and the danger that Yair poses really well on his channel um, afterwards. Um, you know, he did that um, that interview. Um, I'm not sure who, who does the interviewing for his channel, but the way that he broke the fight down was, was amazing. Um, and it made sense because of the way that we were talking during the fight, what we were seeing as far as like his stand switches, um, his ability to put himself where he needed to be, but just out of danger. Um, And, you know, just his movement stifling everything that Yair uh, tends to do to other people, you know, with his unpredictability. And I feel like um, the best way I could put it is he narrowed Yair's possibilities of strikes down to one or two. And he just guessed right every single time. Um, it was a straight game of chess for mm-hmm. Volk at this point. He he really proved uh, when it comes to, you know, these, I guess he's not really, is he a younger fighter? I don't know, but you get my point. Mm-hmm. Um, but being unpredictable to, um, you know, an, a fighter like Volk, who's a vet at this point. There's a, there's nothing really unpredictable about it, um, yeah. and you're right. He he did neutralize him. I mean, the body shots, those unpredictable body shots, that switching stance. Is that what you're saying? He was able to, um, you know, catch him or just switch so that he didn't have the opportunity to to land those body shots. Um, mm-hmm. The ground elbows. That was probably the thing I worried about the most for Volk. Um, but oh, on yeah, the flip yeah. side, I knew Volk's, you know, his ground and pound is super dangerous. Um, and I, that was the thing I was most excited to see what he was going to do. You know, what's interesting about his ground and pound is 
most people who go into a ground and pound situation, they're thinking offense, 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 uh, with just a little bit of defense. But he was thinking it evenly. He was aware of the threat that Yair poses even off of his back. He's looking for elbows. Um, he's looking for ways to to cut you up. And, and Volk was just cognizant of that throughout his ground and pound. And, you know, like you say, you know, he's a monster down there and he is, but he's a calculated monster down there. And I mean, I think I take more, I give him more credit for this fight than I give him for when he beat up Korean zombie. Like he looked to me even better because I feel like Yair right now is a better fighter than Korean zombie. And Volkanovsky just made it look like he knew everything that was going to happen before it happened. And he did look like he was ahead of, of him for sure. Yeah. Until he didn't and he got caught, which is what set yeah. him off. And that's the thing against Yair. You cannot, you can't, you know, slack off at any point because that's that unpredictability and he will throw anything from anywhere. Um, me and you were talking yesterday um, and I made a comment that, after hearing Volkanovsky talk about um, the danger that Yair poses, it made me think of, you know, if I was putting together the perfect fighter, like the perfect fighter, and I could take attributes from individual fighters, I think that I would think really long and hard about using Yair's striking, like because of his ability to strike in all three um you know, different areas of striking, long range, mid range and close range. Um, and just the unpredictability of how he can do it. And he can finish a fight at any moment. Um, Yair striking is amazing. I, that's that's one of the things I took from it from for on Yair's part. But yeah. when it comes to Volk, I mean. But also with Yair, I, just the way he strings together those those combinations, they're when you say unpredictability, that's kind of what I'm thinking about too. Um, yeah. I think his explanation of how he does that is is pretty amazing. I don't know if you remember that in mm-hmm. I, I don't remember it was some interview where he's like, imagine you're just like in a black room and every um, strike that you throw is a white line, right? Um, oh yeah. And he's like, yeah. I I try to fill the spaces. Um, the black space around. So I was like, well, shit, that's a really good way of explaining it. Um, com- I guess combining, you know, or, or taking, if you're building a fighter, right, a perfect fighter, um, it's not really on the same topic, but I, I really do think that it would be amazing if he was actually able to train with Izzy because they're obviously both primarily kickboxers. Um, I, I know that's a long shot, but that would be, yeah, that would be pretty amazing. amazing to see. And, and honestly, I think yeah. Izzy could, you know, would, would learn some stuff from him as well. Cause uh, mm-hmm. the way that he, nobody throws elbows the way that he throws elbows. Nobody does. Even, even going back to Tony Ferguson and Fer- Tony Ferguson threw some nasty elbows, but he still doesn't throw it the way that Yair does. It's just so crazy john Precise. jones throws great he throws crazy yeah. elbows too um or at least he used to not so much now but yair is just different man i just i, I can appreciate how different he is and what that brings to the game and i i'm curious what the ufc decides to do with him going forward as far as like you know do they you know make a rematch that we talked about before um, after this fight or like what happened to him? I mean, with, with your ear, as Joe would say. Yeah. Your ear. Yeah. So I was thinking, you know, the most obvious, which would be, you know, Ilya, whatever. But I, I think that the fight between him and Ortega was cut short. That would be a, an amazing fight. He was losing uh, initially to Ortega, but I still think it would it would be a good matchup for him. I think 
I thought that he was winning against Ortega, but yeah. it doesn't really matter because the fight got cut short. But I think I've seen a lot of people say that they were looking, you know, that's kind of the next matchup for him. I mean, it's still at the top of the top of the top. But during that fight, I, I got the the friends fight vibe from them where normally when friends fight, like they're reluctant to throw like power shots, you know, they'll touch, you know, you know, here and there, but like they won't throw power shots. They won't try to put their buddy down like that. And I was getting that vibe from them. Um, And that's, those are just not fun fights. Um, Like their families, like, kind of co-mingled during, you know, before the fight. And I'm like, I don't Really? I don't, I don't, yeah. I was like, I don't Yeah, know no new friends. Show. Can't like, do that. Yeah, like, this is going to be a super whack fight. But, you know, could d- totally be wrong. You know, a lot of people, once they get hit in the face, then they forget who's on the other side. So who, who knows? I mean, but from a ranking standpoint, that fight does make sense. Yeah. Um... So, I guess for for Volk then, well, com- coming back to to Yair, I did get like there's just this gut feeling of of seeing him on, uh, you know, on the floor. He he looked like he he accepted defeat for sure, and he respected it. It wasn't even like, oh man, it was just like, okay, I've got work to do. But I did get this feeling like, man, he he could retire right now. I don't want him to, but I could see it just considering his past and he tends to wear like his emotions on his sleeve and things like that. So I could see it. I hope he doesn't. I hope he actually listens to the interview uh, that Volk had on his channel uh, because it was nothing but compliments and he just got outmatched. You know, it's it's not like it wasn't a tough um, war for yeah, for, for Taekwondo sure. Vogue, Taekwondo Vogue, for Taekwondo Vogue, um, aka for, Nelly, for for, for Nelly Volkanovsky, I would, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I want to see that Islam fight right now. I just, I don't. Well, okay, so here's the rumor. Okay, rumor has it Charles was paid. <laughs> Right, he was paid to pass up the Islam fight. Why? Because it opens up the space for Volkanovski to fight Islam again. And then when Islam loses, then he gets to fight Charles. It sets the stage. Okay. I'll take my tinfoil hat off. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I don't like to me, like <clears throat> what would be the benefit? Like, like in all seriousness, is Volca a bigger draw? Yes. Than, than, yes. Than Charles. Than Charles? I think so. For casuals now. Well, shit, even, I don't know, maybe. For casuals, I, I think, do think to so. Me, I don't think I don't think that there's a significant if even if he is, I don't think that the difference is significant enough for them to say, okay, we'll pay you, Charles, so you can sit down and let Volk get his second. I thought it was a joke. Okay, it was a joke. It was a joke. It's just um, you know, Charles came out and he was like, I'm not fighting in October. Absolutely yeah, yeah. Not. I mean he just won't yeah. be ready. He won't yeah, be ready. Yeah, that's all. Um, ain't, no, ain't no point in rushing it. Yeah. So one thing was like, but what's the difference between October and November? Because he did say November school. So that's just kind of weird. I, but I mean, it makes me feel like there's an injury that, that has to heal up. I'm, yeah, that's possible. Also, Volkanovski won't be ready by November so, or October Nope. Um, getting, with his surgery. surgery. Yeah. Getting that surgery. Um, <clears throat> He can think, fight Faziv. I'm talking about Islam. But Faziv's coming off a loss. <sighs> Everyone else is tied up, though. Everybody else or, is tied up. Not fighting. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I did I did like Volk, you know, thinking about maybe Aljo. Um that that would be a cool fight to see. Um that probably depends on if Aljo wins or not. Mm-hmm. And then it might not be that, you know, shiny to Volk. Um I, I honestly I don't know if I really want to see him fight Taporia. Not yet. I do think Taporia needs I don't to. Think, yeah, I don't think that Taporia should get be some fighting experience him. And, no. <clears throat> I don't think, I think it's, Taporia it's, can fight. Oh, well, he said he didn't want him to fight Max, right? Volk yeah. said the soul is mine. So, I mean, I still think he could fight Max, uh, Ilya. I think he can fight um, Josh Emmett. Um, oh, he just has did. He fought? Oh, he did, right? Well, yeah, what that's about. Who he, um, that's who he just beat. What about Arnold or uh, Ortega? I think those are all be good fights that would help prepare him for for Volk anyway. To me, what I would like to see is I would like to see Yair against uh, Arnold Allen, and I would like to see um, Ilya Taporia against Brian Ortega. That's what I would like to see. Mix it up a little bit. Um, Because... I just I don't I think Ilya needs another fight. I think Henry Cejudo was the one that said that, you know, he didn't recommend Ilya jumping into that just yet. Um, and I, I tend to agree not not from the standpoint of um, him not, you know, having any sort of deficiency. I just think that a little bit more experience will help. Um, you know, you fighting the the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Um, he's tied with John Jones now. They're both tied. I saw but, uh, that. They're both. That's weird. Has that ever happened? I, I mean, not that I remember, but who knows? Probably. Um, well, now they have to fight. Especially to going back to when like spot. Demetrius was on his run and John Jones was still doing this thing um, yeah. at light heavyweight. It, it possibly could have happened then, but um, but uh, I think that a fresh set of matches, you know, for the featherweights um, allow Volkanovski to get his surgery, rest up a little bit, um, you know, push back on, push back on him wanting to fight so quickly. Um, let things play out and, and maybe Aljo wins. Maybe he does. And maybe he, I mean, cause if, honestly, if Aljo wins, like he shouldn't have to fight anybody, um, at featherweight let that except man for the get champion. Some risk. Let, if, let if Aljo that man wins, risk. who are you talking about? Volk? Uh, Aljo. Well, are you I saying mean, that's, if that's Aljo wins, he doesn't fight anybody? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying if Aljo wins, he doesn't need to fight anybody at featherweight. He can fight. Um, yeah, I'm just saying he don't need to fight. He needs to rest in general if Aljo wins. I mean, he may. It could, it's, to, it's totally up to him. If he wins, everything is totally up to him. Um, I'm sure he'll take some time out for sure. Um I hope he does. That man, that timeline is, that's horrible. It's like he's still getting punished for, uh, for what did Henry say? For his Oscar Henry, winning for his, performance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But um, we'll see how it unfolds. I, I, I like what Volk has done. He's, he's really shaking things up in, like, three different divisions. Like, how are you fucking boogeyman in three divisions? Yeah, it's weird. it is. It's it's impressive. It's it's mm-hmm. goat level stuff. Even though he's not the goat just yet, but he's going no. in the right direction. He's going in the yeah. right direction. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, okay. So, Pantoja beat Brandon Moreno to take the flyweight championship. And you know what was interesting about the the split decision win was the fact that it was a split decision at, at all. And then also that, that one of the judges gave Brandon 49, 46. Well, now, I don't remember what round that was, but go ahead. So if somebody, if, if Brandon got 49, 46, that means that he won four out of the five rounds on that judge's scorecard. Now, that judge is a, had it with control time. He said, I'm sick of it. He judged it like a boxing match then, if that's the yeah. case, right? Because 
supposed to mm-hmm. do round by round. Uh, if he <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Yeah, I, and from his perspective, it sounds like he's saying Brandon outstruck Pantoja. Would you? I, I can see that someone arguing that, and that's fair, but. I, but the control the time, danger that it means something. Yeah, the danger that he was in, and uh, I don't know, um, one, was it two or three, and then four and five? Sir, no. He got folded into a chair, just, just straight folded. And he was winning. That was round one, right? Yeah, that was round one, yeah. Brandon, I felt actually, I wouldn't say he was dominating him, but he was definitely outstriking him. And sure. um, <clears throat> Pantoja found him, and that was it. He 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 folded. He yeah. went down. I don't know if after uh, he got the knockdown that Brandon then uh, broke his hand, or was that before? Um, either way. Maybe that's what, who was it? What judge was it? Do you know? I can't even remember what judge it was. I'll look it up though. Um, yeah. Who, yeah. Look it up. Special, um, special needs judge. Yeah. I, I think that's what he was looking at. He's, it, but it's weird. You can't, you, you can't discredit, you know, the control time. And it wasn't even so much. It wasn't like Brandon was not in danger. If he didn't have good, uh, Defense, he would have been out of there. Yeah. He was in trouble. So he looked like it was, uh, me in labor was, after four hours. Like, <laughs> he was out of there. It was Ben Cartledge. And he gave Brandon rounds two, three, four, and five. The other fighter or the other judges gave Brandon rounds. And both of them did. They gave Brandon rounds four and two. So that makes sense. Four and two. I think that matter of fact, two is when uh, Pantoja was what well, he was wobbled. So I I could see that. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, in in the way that I thought about it was within the rules of this mixed martial arts fight. Brand or uh, Pantoja won the fight. But mm-hmm. if we were outside of these rules, you know, if this is a fight that's happening, you know, in the street, Brandon won that fight. Just based yeah. on damage. Like he he put more of a hurting on Pantoja than Pantoja put on him. But within the, the MMA unified rules that everybody agrees to before they walk into that cage, Pantoja won. And it was primarily... Because of takedowns and back and not back control, but just control time. Yeah, but Pantoja's striking isn't totally out of the question, and he threw some crazy elbows, some sneaky no, elbows. Yeah, no, he he. Um, it's it's not like Brandon washed him in the straight striking. Brandon, in my opinion, Brandon won the striking battle, but I think the Pantoja, you know, he he got you know his pound of flesh too. But true, I think but Brandon Brandon won those exchanges. Brandon. Okay, I don't know numbers, right? I, I don't know total strikes or significant strike like right now, but it does make me think he he's more flashy. He's you know stringing together combos, and he he looks better doing it too. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he inflicted more damage from what I can remember. Um, because he n- never knocked Pantoja down. No. I don't know. He wobbled him a few it, times. Um, but He wobbled him. And, and I'm talking about his, just his appearance, um, just looking at the damage that was inflicted. In my opinion, it looked like Pantoja had more damage. But it doesn't really matter because um, when it comes down to control time, Pantoja dominated control time. And you put a close striking battle, but one of them has far more control time. You're going to give it to that person. It's just kind of how it goes. But 
I don't know. Did you see that picture of Brandon Moreno in the aftermath? He, you know, his his face. Yeah, it looked like there was some. It was a situation. I, I don't know. He took some damage. I mean, he didn't. It's not like he just you know got pinched and taken down and lost a fight, but he beat the other dude up. It wasn't like that. But I mean, I think that. Okay. The control time ultimately is what changed everything, especially considering the fact that Brandon would win. He would win like half the round and then get taken down for the other half. So. No, that only happened in round one. Pantoja didn't give him no other half of the round in any other rounds. He got like seconds, maybe minutes. Like it, he was very dominant on, on the ground. Brandon didn't have an answer. I, and it's surprising because, th- yeah, he just fought, figure, what is it, Figueredo, four times. And, I mean, his thing is jujitsu. So I guess I'm not re- remembering how Brandon did uh, in that area. He, he did well. I but mean, he even su- it's submitted surprising Figueredo. To think about. But I, I think that his jujitsu was fine. It's the fact that he was even in those situations was the problem. It was, you know, Pantoja wasn't able to finish him. Um, you know, he got into some some tough situations for sure. But from a judging standpoint, you know, he shouldn't have even been there. That's that's a fight threatening situation when you have Pantoja on your back. And, you know, Pantoja has to be rewarded for that. And, and mm-hmm. That's where him claiming those rounds come come in. Um, I agree with the forty eight forty seven card um, that the other two judges have. Um, what did I judge so, it? Because you, you scored it while we were watching. Oh yeah, yeah. It was really yeah, close. It was really close. Especially I forgot about round four. That was those exchanges, just the back and forth. Man, I'm starting to. I guess I could see it a little bit. What, if, the if, if, uh the judge that yeah um if, if you c- completely ignore control time i, I can see it and, and you can't you shouldn't but no apparently yeah. he did i thought i guess he thought he was it's at a boxing, boxing match mm-hmm. weird okay so yeah. on to the next one so um is this the one you didn't want to talk about who is it what's the next one take me there what is it robert whitaker um, shocks the world by losing to Drickis Duplessis, the real African. He could take the fifth. You know, he could just do the Charles thing, and it wasn't me. Oh, uh, that was new. Yeah, we saw you. Yeah, that was you. And it was Charles too when he got beat up. But um, <laughs> nah, man, this was not. This wasn't good at all. This wasn't good sure. at all. Um, you know, I don't think that Rob is washed or anything like that. A lot of people are saying that. I think that all credit goes to Drickus Duplessis and his game plan. I think that Robert Whitaker just had a, a bad game plan. And, uh, yeah, there's no, uh, you know, restarting the game on this one. He's Well, you think he underestimated? Uh, I don't Drickus? think he underestimated him. I think that his, his plan of action was incorrect. You know, I don't you think had it a plan was to underest- get punched in the face type deal. Um, oh, he- well, the plan was not to get punched in the face, and once <laughs> he did, things started to unravel because yeah. the way that Drickus Duplessis fights, he is a Tasmanian devil in the first round, and I feel like Robert put himself. And I said this too in the last episode that. Robert, he does get hit. He does get hit. And Drikas Duplessis is a swarmer. So if you get hit, you got to back out of that situation and get away um, before he swarms. And if he does swarm, you know, be a matador. Allow him to do his thing, but, you know, take very little damage. Because later on in the fight, you'll be able to capitalize on the energy that he spent doing those swarms. And it That's just true. never got there. It and never got there. Seemed like he came to play checkers. 
Yeah. He was, he worried, did. He was worried about that Hershey he had back to the hotel. Yeah. I don't know. But then, like, Drake is, you know, his, his punches weren't wild. His punches were straight. Um, he took advantage of Rob's uh, stance. You know, Rob does that taekwondo stance where he's on his toes and his his lead hand is down. And Drickus was like, I can hit you in the mouth before you can get that hand up. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> he did. Oh, my God. I, you know, I rewatched um, Volk and I rewatched Brandon. I couldn't I couldn't rewatch this one. In fact, while I was sitting there, as soon as I got the feeling where I was going to lose, I I disengaged and I I couldn't even really analyze what the hell was going on. I just this dude's about to lose. Oh no! Yeah. And I was out of there. It was, I just one of those did not expect uh, situations. Um, I think that that was everybody. That was everybody. We were all yeah. Thoroughly confused by what we just saw. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I still we love just, him. Still, we, still. We, we watched Drikas Duplessis wa- uh, fight Derek Brunson, and it ended super sloppy. Two, you know, tired middleweights, and he was able to capitalize on Derek Brunson uh, just being, just having nothing left in the tank. When he fought Darren Till, that was way too close for somebody that was about to get cut from the UFC. And, um, yeah, he won the fight, but it ended up being a very sloppy affair towards the end. And so you look at all of that and you take that into him fighting a a world champion, um, somebody who's very precise, who's able to use his movement and his wrestling to take people out of their game. And you put those two things together and you're like, okay, he should have no problems beating up Drikas Duplessis. Except the one thing that Drikas does exceptionally well, which is get you hurt and swarm, is exactly what he did, and that's exactly how he won. Well, you watched the fight. I didn't, so I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one thing I did say was after Drikas fought Robert, and my prediction was that he was going to lose, that he could fight Strickland, and... Uh, since that didn't happen, I guess now Robert could fight Strickland yeah. in that case. Yeah. Because so, um, there really is nothing else uh, to do for him up there. Not up there, no. You know, no. I mean, and if he wins that doing? fight, then, you know, he'll still be so in right. the top five. They update the rankings yet? Yeah, they did. Drikas is number one now. Um, Alex Pajeda is still there. And Rob's number three, I believe. Why is he still there? Yeah, still there. Well, I guess he hasn't fought yet. Uh, he, he is scheduled, right? Is he fighting on 290? Is it 291? Yeah, he's fighting on the, um, Dustin and Justin. He's fighting, uh, he's fighting Jan, Jan right? Blahovich. Yeah, Jan Blahovich, yeah. Okay, so if you, if you, I don't know if it's just, you know, my laptop rendering this way, but... I'm going to take a screenshot. Why do they have uh, Pantoja's picture is like this small. Everyone else's picture is like ginormous. Um, oh, it's because they're using the uh, regular headshot. I guess they haven't updated the headshot with the with the belt. No, he's got a belt. Oh, he's got a belt on there? Mm-hmm. It's a little belt. Oh, he got a little. It's a little like his head. You see it? Oh, yeah, I see it. That's messed up. I that know. Respect this he man, like, please. Oh, he, he's a he's a flyweight. Let's make him small. That's messed up. Let's make him small. I, what I wanted to ask, um, what what is Brandon Moreno like? You know, kind of what's next for him? Um, obviously, I get the gut feeling he's not. UFC might not give him the rematch, but I mean, and I don't think the fans want to see that. To be honest. But, no, it's been too many reruns down there, man. It's like yeah. too many run it backs. I mean, even this was a a, a rematch. That's true. That that's true. Um, but still, now Moreno's a champion. It's been a long time. Storyline with the boo. But like, <clears throat> I mean, Brandon just fought uh, Figgy four times, and there were amazing fights, amazing draws. It's not like it wouldn't be. This was still an amazing fight. It really and was. The man 
fought with a broken hand. So a lot of the things that maybe he, he could have executed, he obviously he didn't. Much like um, Yair, that mm-hmm. headbutt was nasty. Like that could have knocked somebody out. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, that could knock somebody headbutt, out. No, it, it was. That could be fight changing. That could be very fight t- changing because I mean he connected with that thing and not he on did. purpose. It, he didn't launch himself. He, it was an accident. Yeah, he but, was gonna fucking noggin, but like it, it could be. But I just don't think. I think that Volk did amazing at preparing for for his opponent here. But I'm just saying, I guess. There's a lot of things that um, can alter the course of a fight, like a broken hand or yeah. gigantic uh, head to the chin. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. But anyhow, all right. If they don't give him the rematch, which I don't think they would, unless they put... No, I don't... I, I really don't see it happening, but it would be cool... Ill Amir, no. Let's just do Brandon. That, that that's who I was. Who you wait? Who, who you talking about? You talking about uh, Pantosia? Who he would fight? Either next? one. Either one would be amazing. Uh, Brandon and Brandon, take that back. Uh, or you can do Brandon and uh, Alexander. Either way, it's a rematch. Oh, did he already <laughs> fight Pantosia? Oh shit! I gotta go back and see that. Either way. Or just um, fuck up the whole division and just throw Matt in there just for fun. match now. So yeah. I think that I think that uh Pantoja I don't think that there should be a rematch. Um I think that Roy Vall should fight uh, Amir Abazi and that Pantoja should fight Raw Dog, Brandon Roy Vall. So we're totally ignoring uh Figgy, huh? Figgy's going up to fight Dominic Cruz. No, no. He came back down, remember? He changed his mind. Well, he was originally uh, supposed to fight somebody else. I think he's going to fight Dominic Cruz. Okay. I think he is. I think so. Oh, but, well, I mean, I mean that'll be interesting. he figures out his life. Uh, it was a weight cut situation, right? Like, yeah. that that's tough. He, he's been in the game for a long time. I will allow it. I see him. So I'm looking, it, it, yeah, it says coming back to they verbally agreed. By the way, um, Dominic Cruz and Davidson Figueroa. Mm. Verbal agreement. It's got to be either like a handshake or written, right? That's the rules. Um, is, yeah. Uh, well, obviously, Drikus is unfortunately going to fight Izzy really quick before we talk about that. Um, Octagon situation that everyone's tripping about. Henry said something interesting, and I just genuinely wanted to ask. So he said um, that I'm trying to remember what he's talking about, but he's talking about um, ah, Drake is preparing for. Uh, I was gonna say Islam for Izzy, and he was like, "You gotta get in the gym every day and just get kicked, and you gotta build callus on your knees and on your shins." And I was like, "Who the fuck?" How do you, I didn't even know, I thought it was like callus on your fingers. You know, you play guitar. I didn't know you can build callus on your shin or your knee. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Like, what you know, does, and You is, know where I got that from? You know where I understood that you could do that? Hmm. It was from, um, is it blood sport? I think it's blood sport. Um, I don't remember that. I mean, we just watched that too, not too long ago. But I see that's interesting. What does that look like? What does that feel like? Building callus. I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's like, no different from like, you know, from, you know, if you're using, you know, the ones you get from lifting weights or from doing mm-hmm. a lot of pull ups or whatever. Yeah, but um, I guess like on your shin, that that's different. Like your knee, now that I think about it, okay, when you put it in uh, that perspective of like lifting weights and stuff. But like on your yeah. shin, it's like yeah. baby bottom soft. <laughs> nah, not my shin. My well, you got goblin shins then. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh my gosh. All right. That's my, <clears throat> that's my stuff. But no, you can. Yeah, you can. I'm you, can you can you can you can build that up. Um Yeah, I didn't know that. That's just interesting. Gotta get used to it. It's crazy. Get used to it. Yeah. The human body so, is crazy. Yeah. Th- that's so, like yeah. permanent shin guards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but then again, you know, you numb those pain sensors, you don't know when you're actually getting damaged. So pain is a good indicator of, you know, needing to move out of the way. So that, that, I, that's an issue as well. I actually, I have to say, like, I am surprised at, first of all, me even watching a Henry Cejudo, like, breakdown video. Um, I'm enjoying this season of Henry. I like his breakdowns and... um I mean, I just like how he owns the shit that he says. And, you know, he goes, oh, shit, Drake, because I got to apologize. Like that. I mean, you know, a lot of us did. A lot of us needed yeah. to because we didn't ex- yeah. we didn't think that was going to happen. It was kickboxer, yeah. by the way. It wasn't blood sport. It was kickboxer. Oh, uh, I don't know if I've seen that. Oh, what? Man. What is this? That movie is crazy. You, if you, if you like the blood sport, like kickboxer oh, okay, gotcha. to me is like even oh. better. Um, Wait, who's that dude in the back? What's his name? Tung Po. Tung Po. Super familiar. He's in a, a few other things, then, huh? I don't. I only know him from this because he's a very memorable character. He didn't even say words. Well, actually, he says like one line in the whole thing. He just makes well, noises. Well, don't tell me. Oh. <laughs> All right, we gotta watch Sounds it. Sounds noises, but um, yeah, you gotta watch that. But like. Yeah, Drake is, he's going to have to get in the lab and they're really going to have to come up with a, a really good game plan for this one because yeah. Izzy's so cerebral. Everything that we said about Alex, you can you can say similar things about Izzy except for when it comes mm-hmm. to takedowns because he don't do that. But Hey, um, hey, 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 hey. I've seen a few videos. He, he he's, he's working on it. I'm working on it. It's he's not, getting it's, in there. It's not an ability. It's not him not being able to. It's does he do it? You know, that's it's what almost I'm like... About. It doesn't come natural because that's just not. I want to say it's instinct. not like in his arsenal. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's not instinctual. Yeah, you know, he's gonna have to tap into it. So I think he could do it. He, he he's pretty mindful. He can. I think. Um, it's gonna. So, I, I it kind of takes me into his character. Um, I don't have a problem with, with what happened. I don't know why. You know, people are losing their minds over it. Um. What do you think? I think it's, I, I think it's just people just being uncomfortable with, you know, that was on the tip word. Of my tongue. <laughs> yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because of yeah. the setting, you know what I'm saying? Like, if if we're on Izzy's channel, you know, Freestyle Bender, and he's, you know, saying something, you know, blah 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 blah, nigga, this, like, you know, it's not really going to be a big deal, but. The fact that he was on the mic at a UFC event that is rated G. It's for every or rated E for everyone. Okay. So that's I true. think that that's where but at the same time If like, you're watching guys we're that guys we're at a, we're at a cage match. It's this cage fighting. Punching fighting. each other in the face, elbowing each other in the face. Like choking each other until they go to sleep. Like Yeah. Mm, I think, you know, somebody saying nigga is like the, the least of your worries. They, they, I, I don't know if that should be your biggest concern here. Yeah. But. Um, and and what, what the fuck are you, Drake? Like, dude, get out of here. If you if it's uncomfortable, change the channel. Keep it moving. What's, what's the problem? Yeah. I, I mean, it didn't. It, it definitely didn't bother me. It made me laugh. I was, It was hilarious. Because I understood where he's, where, what he was trying to go at yeah. with that because I mean he's talked about it leading up to it um, yeah it doesn't make that, it right or doesn't make it mm-hmm. wrong it's just how Izzy felt in response to what Drika said and mm-hmm. Drika can't get mad about that and he didn't look uh, he, he didn't look too invested in the conversation anyway but he didn't look phased by it he was yeah, just like he was like okay anyway um, in fact I I thought it was funny when Izzy, um, you know, he, he flipped off uh, Drika's uh, coach or manager, whatever he is. Drika saw and he was like, ah, you know, 
You're crazy. He wasn't. You're right. He wasn't faced by he, it. He he understands situation. He understands. Yeah. What's going on. Like, dude, you said something, and regardless of what your intention was and how you meant it, the outcome was this guy took it a certain way, and he responded to it. It is what it is. But I think it also could be in his previous fight where he did what he did to um, what's his name, Squidward's house. <laughs> looking guy what's his name out Al- Pajeda um yeah Squidward's his house. kids like he just did mm-hmm. that you know and again it's like why why are why are we having to defend this man did y'all not see yeah. what what happened in that whole thing that's true um I, I again I don't have a problem with with what Izzy did like this yeah. is I mean, ridiculous. And, and, and Dana agreed. He was just like, <laughs> "He's black." He's like, "What's the problem?" He can say what he wants. I was like, "Oh, not, don't open that door." Like, but I, mean, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like I get what you're saying. You probably yeah. should say it that way. Yeah, but. take back just a little bit. <laughs> I understand you're trying to tread lightly, yeah. but like, but it, just to put it in regular terms, I guess if somebody that is white um, that lives in Oak Cliff or in Compton um, says, you know, this is for the real people from Compton. You know, the the other people that live there are going to be like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> and I feel like that's where that came from. Now, mm-hmm. granted, you know, Izzy didn't, doesn't live in Africa. Um, he doesn't train in Africa, but he is Nigerian. Do you he remember is from when Africa? Like, yeah, that's true. But do you remember when you first asked me, and you didn't even tell me, uh, you didn't even give me context. You kind of just gave me like a scenario. Like, so if a uh, white guy said such and such, and I was like, well, I mean, if. I mean, I see what he's saying. I don't, I don't have a problem with what he's saying. Um, yeah, I remember. I actually still don't have a problem with what Drika said. I mean, he said what he said. So. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because if you turn it around and, and you, you look say, at it from his perspective, yeah, you look at it from his perspective. He is from Africa. Always lived in Africa. Trains in Africa. Started fighting in uh, ECW in Africa. He's been in Africa the whole time. So yeah. you can see where he's coming from. I think my only the, issue, the my only issue is him saying the room. I breathe. <laughs> <laughs> no, my issue with it. The only thing and I do remember saying is when this bull said, I breathe the air. I was like, OK, now, wait a minute. You don't got to say all that. Like, yeah, it's too descriptive. You know, it's like I get where you're coming from and you yeah. are and you Chill would out. be the, the first right you know, person from the continent of Africa that trains in Africa to get, you know, a belt if you were to be Izzy. That's true. But you just got to temper the way that you say things. That's all. Because people he, can twist it and take it and go all the way over here with it. When right. that's, that may not be what you meant. And also, so and maybe we don't have to get too far into this, but you got to think about, I don't know, like maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Just think about your journey and someone else's journey and what the fuck you're saying. That's all. Maybe maybe you had the opportunity to stay and train there and live there and breathe the air and eat the dirt and whatever the fuck else you do. But like these guys, <laughs> these other guys, maybe they didn't have that opportunity. And maybe they yeah. had to get out of there. And it doesn't mean, you know, they're not a true whatever they are. On the flip yeah. side, um, I mean, do you got do you have to get offended? You chose to get offended by that. But that's what fighters do. That's what athletes do. They look for an edge, and he found one. And he did, and it's great. And I thought it was hilarious. I laughed. And the lead up is going to be happened. crazy. Yeah, the lead it's up be is going to be nuts. Yeah. So. I like it. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. I mean, it's insane. Drakus made a fan. I think he made a lot of fans. Mm-hmm. I think he made a lot of fans on the back of Robert Whitaker. 
Mm-hmm. Terrible. <laughs> oh man. Well, he he. You know what? Robert is. Uh, he's got his Hershey bar somewhere. He's content. Um, I don't know. Maybe. He's cool. He's a future. He's, Hall he's of just Famer. gonna chill out, you know, and have a rest. You know. I would say. Yeah, he's take probably a, take a break. And this is a shameless plug. I will be doing a top five middleweights of all time soon. But he said a shameless plug. Is your podcast? Um, sure, but you know, I'm trying to be respectful of you know advertising things. But but regardless, I'm going to do it, and I think everybody knows that. But I think that he's still, he's in my top five though. Yeah, Robert Whitaker is one of the top be. five. You know weights of all time for sure let me go back so, remember i think i i was uh looking at uh his past fights and the man hadn't lost anything besides izzy since i think it was 2014 yeah and and the fight that he lost i think was against wonder boy at welterweight that's what it was that's true yeah yeah like dude is fought and conquered killers yeah so, he's 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 made his path he's you know He's proved a point. He's sexy as hell. That's it. So he's got it. He could chill now. I don't know what he looks like. I've never mm. seen him in my life. But he's a great fighter, though. Great fighter. Bo Nickel. That's what you were supposed to do. But what? Bo, Bo credit Nickel? words do. Yeah. Yeah. Credit words do. Yeah. yeah. I'm not even going to really talk about that Bo Nickel fight yeah. very much because there's really not that much to talk about. It does suck. I was hoping Val would take it. The way that he was supposed to. It sucked for Val because that's a terrible way to be introduced to the UFC, but Bo did what he was supposed to do. Light work. And he needs to fight somebody in the top 15. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, for sure. Need to step up the difficulty. He's playing the game on easy right now. Yeah. Uh, I I also like to see to see Val, I mean, I, I liked his personality, and I, um, uh-huh. I just, where did they get the film? I want to see the film. I want to see his fights. Uh, this was a good opportunity for him and someone that um, takes up a, was it a week? Week's notice I, type I deal? I don't even know if it was a week. It felt like it was a couple of days. And, I don't know. And it's your, you know, debut? Like, dude, okay. Yeah. Um, it, it was interesting though. As soon as he got, uh, you know, in the octagon, he looked pretty nervous, which he didn't. Nervous before. and just a fish out of water, just man, yeah. All those lights and cameras and people and the the ceremony of of walking in and getting, you know, all that stuff done at the the pre fight station, like everything. It's just it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, I, I can sure. only imagine. Yeah. Um, so the next fight, um, down Jalen Turner against Dan Hooker, gosh, like, you know, what's funny about that fight is it went exactly how I thought it was going to go until the end. What did I say? What was my prediction? Uh, you, Dan? Picked Dan, you picked Dan. You picked Dan. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. I picked Jalen and Jalen did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He, um, was able to control the range Dan actually kind of seemed slow, but I don't know if that was after his arm broke. But regardless, he seemed slow. Jalen was connecting. I mean, he was doing his thing, but it's something, maybe it's something with the blonde hair because he did, Dan Hooker did very much what he, Charles Oliveira does. Like he took Jalen's best shot, took everything Jalen had, and was like, Are you done? And from that point, he started to grapple with him, and Jalen was, he started to take away that gas tank that Jalen had. Like, it was it was insane. Jalen actually posted that, um, he said, it's weird that fighters over 30, once they dye their hair blonde, they turn into Super Saiyans. <laughs> you know, I was actually uh, driving during that fight, so I was uh, kind of just listening. Um so I, I need to go back and, and rewatch it, but it was a war. It was a war. Only thing and I mean it's a highlight reel, but I'm driving and I hear when Jalen kicks him, Dan 
in the face. And it sounded, I'm in my car, it's quiet. And all I hear is the, you know, like, it was yeah. really alarming. I don't know how he ate that. Dan's, I don't know. Like, and you're one right. Of, you one of the things, oh, go ahead. Just super sign, just. Like, what, I know I talk about, you know, the Dustin fight changing Dan um, for the negative. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the Dustin fight in this case actually changed Mm -hmm. him for the positive. He was, he was like, okay, I've been here before Mm -hmm. and this is what I didn't do. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think once you get into that dark place and you got to dig really deep. I mean, you, you're right. I've been here before. I can do this. So Yeah. Yeah, and all the questions uh, about Dan's chin should be gone because Jalen hit him with some nasty stuff. Nasty. And on top of that, Dan was able to take away um, 20% of um, Jalen Turner's ooh. purse because he came in overweight. So... That is something I saw and I thought was pretty funny. And it's like you trained with Hamza one time and this is what you took away. And I'm like, yeah, don't do him like that. But he is, he really is as tall as the trees on Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. An int. Ginormous. Yeah. yeah. Huge, huge. I don't know if he's big enough to move up a weight class or not, but... Absolutely. It does seem like weight. <laughs> he is would he? still be he know. would still be a big welterweight, even if he goes up okay. to welterweight at 170. It, like okay. he would still be big. I, I just wonder, is he gonna be comfortable there? Like what's keeping him from doing that? Because if we're all know. wondering, I'm sure he's been there and back. So Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he just feels more comfortable at one fifty five and feels he can take advantage of his uh, height and his reach at 155, which he can. Fair but, enough, yeah. But, but at the same time, like, he, he doesn't have a history of missing weight, like, super often or anything like that. So I think... No, but he has a history of being right on the money. Like, there's, like, not a lot of, you know... Is it 155, so... Yeah, unless I'll it's a championship look at it right fight. Now. You, you, you know, he's you, coming in right at 55. Yeah. But, but I don't. Anyway. I don't think that he's missed too often. Let me see. Let me go back and look. No, I don't see that he's missed before. Hmm. Um. I didn't say he missed. I just said he's coming in right on the money. So. Yeah. Um. It's another good fight, though. They didn't get fight of the night, did they? Or performance of the night? I don't think so. I think that that okay. was uh, Brandon and Pantoja, I feel like. Oh, 20%. Boy. Ugh, mm-hmm. That make me so upset. Yeah. yeah. Dan came out on top. So, I don't know. Um, Dan Dan moved up to number 10 now. He's number 10. He actually just took Grant. You remember Grant Dawson? We were talking last week. Grant got moved up to number 10. Well, they dropped Grant down to 11 and moved Dan to 10. And Jalen, I think, is like 12 or something like that, 13. Oh, really? Still up there. Yeah, still still there, but. Okay. Yeah, he, he's going he's gonna to need to win that next fight, I can tell you that. Is There's Grant two, Dawson two the dude that. Uh, sorry. Um, is Grant Dawson the dude that had on the uh, uh, mug shot of uh, my name, Jeff? No. Is that him? No, that that was Ian Ian Machado Gary. He's a fool. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah he's fighting Jeff um, coming up soon. So Jeff Jeff took that personal. But, uh, he did. No, Grant, yeah, Grant Dawson. Did he, he respond last to him week. already? Um, he said something. I can't remember what he said though. He did say something. Oh. But, <laughs> Jeff yeah, seems gonna... like uh, he's real chill. It doesn't is isn't really he reactive is, to for stuff the most like part. that. Mostly, yeah, he is. I would probably be annoyed too if someone put my mugshot on the t shirt at a big Heck event yeah, like I would. International Fucking Fight Week. Yeah. I would be really upset. Yeah. 
yeah, really upset. Hard to say. But um, he gets to punch him in the face, so you know. There's that. There's always that in this sport. Um, mm-hmm. Or what? Was there? But, oh, I thought you were gonna say something Robbie. else about this fight. But uh, yeah, no, no, yeah, go right there. Um, Robbie Lawler uh, beat Nico Price in 38 seconds in his retirement fight. Did you see a lot of people were talking about that was being fi- that being fixed? I was like, dude, are you serious? I actually didn't see anybody talking about that being fixed. Um, okay, I did. I was like, the only thing I thought was fixed in the UFC was. Uh, you know, Amanda and, and Juliana, genuinely, for real, I really do think that. But, like, I don't – who the hell wants to get knocked out? Well, I guess that was in boxing all the time, so maybe. I, maybe I definitely don't think – I definitely don't think it was fixed, especially when they showed the slow uh, the slow motion replay. No, mm-hmm. he, was getting hit in, he was getting hit in the face, like, for real. Um, yeah, First thing I was, said was, like, dude, how do you retire after that, man? Yeah, you go out, you know, on a high. But the, most fighters have a problem with that because as soon as something like that happens, like, wait, I think I got more I in the tank. I still got it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, nigga, you better get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Take your oh, ball man. and go home, bro. That that that, that was <laughs> that wasn't lucky. He trained for that, but yeah, you know, you better I mean, get what get, getting is good. Though. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, I mean, that's a perfect way to, to end a, a career, um, mm-hmm. a storied career, a Hall of Fame career. Like, what else is, What else can you do? Um, yeah. And you get to leave, like, he, he no damage. Gets to go home and this is- just chill. Because normally, you know, people leave like the way that Frankie did a few months ago, asleep. So you don't you don't want that, you know what I'm saying? Think about yeah. when Anderson Tashara, his yeah he didn't go to sleep, but that sucked. That sucked. So, yeah, yeah, Robbie went out yeah. in a very ideal way. Glover was him. close though; he was close to going to sleep. <laughs> if he would have left that choke on, uh, he'd been sleepy night night for sure. So We're not I mean, gonna most talk about most, that anymore. most fighters up? leave. Um, they don't leave on their own like terms, you know. They don't leave on their own terms and they don't leave victorious. But he was able to do both. You did this to yourself. I think GSP he he did he did that, you know, mm. left on his own terms and and victorious and with the belt. Didn't happen all the time. Yeah, kind of GSP deep dive because all YouTube has been showing me is a bunch of alien stuff. And so naturally he's going to pop up. Oh, yeah, and it's right up his alley right there. Yep. And I'm like, I didn't know this was a thing. I shouldn't even think about that. You know, no hmm. shit he believes in on the side. It has nothing to do with his fighting, but. But he is going to be in a grappling uh, match uh, coming up he? soon. I don't know. I, like well, I, say soon. I don't know like, when, but yeah, he's going to do a grappling match. His, op- his opponent has not been named yet, but. Rumor has it they're trying to get uh, Habib to to grapple with him. That's what they say. I don't. I don't. I don't see it happening. I just Might don't. Throw House Bula in there. <laughs> um, well, so they do have the new Willy Wonka movie coming out soon. He could be in there. Uh, <laughs> oh, that. Well, he's not a child, so I can't say that, that poor a, baby. That is an, that is an adult. Mike Tyson does not think so. He does not agree. He thinks that's an optical illusion. Um, it was overall a really, really good card. I liked yeah. it. And I was complaining about it. Like, why the hell is this so stacked? But I get it now. I didn't know what International Fight Week was before. It's a they did a good job. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's a special thing. So, um, and then... It's funny because they turn around and they're like, all right, Holly home, <laughs> which I love Holly, so I don't mind. But, you know, what's interesting um, is, you know, I was going to do a whole preview for the Holly home card. And mm-hmm. I feel like I'll just be talking to nobody because like nobody knows the majority of the card. 
And yeah. and eight of the first. Well, is it eight of the first? No, maybe Dude, uh, maybe the first four or first six matches. People are coming off losses, almost I, all of them. It's crazy. Normally, you know, I'll look at prelims and I know quite a few. Sometimes I'm like, but there's always at least one person that I know or I've seen on this card. Prelims. I've never seen any of those fighters. I've never heard of any of those fighters. So it's a light card, but I mean. These are the ones that are normally crazy. Like, I mean, I know a, a good amount of people on it, but none that, you know, not a lot that move the needle. Like, you know, Terrence McKinney is on there, which I like him a lot. Um, Norma. But uh, yeah, Norma Dumont, um, Walt Harris. Um, let's see. Ottoman uh, uh, Azatar, I know him. Oh, okay, um, okay, that's it. They right after Norma. That's all I know. Besides Holly and uh, Myra, I think it's Myra Silva. It's, yeah, Some Silva. Myra Buena Silva. Um, there we go. I'll watch then, it. Yeah. Now, now Jack Jack Della Mad- Madalena was supposed to fight on the last card on 290, but um, his opponent um, fell out. Mm -hmm. So he got a new opponent. He stayed in Vegas and he's going to fight on this card. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to fight on Utah. That's cool. He's going to fight on this one. Dana said, please. He wants to get paid. Please. Um, And then, you know, Austin Lingo and Tyson Nam, you know, I know them. Um, Ashley Evans Smith. But there's a lot of people who are um, under the radar, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be exciting. You know, I'll definitely watch, but um, keep expectations low and you'll be surprised when great things happen. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm going to go Holly. I don't think she's going to put herself in those armbar situations. Um, Yeah. Silver loves those. How animals. many? Yeah, how how many did she have? We we counted. Well, we didn't uh, count, but we looked, and basically, ninety percent of her fights are won by arm finishes. Bars. She got I one knee bar. She got. got Which seven... just happened in February. So oh, yeah, yeah, I do remember that the Lena Landsberg one. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so she Enough, has seven submissions. Uh, on her record, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five of them. Too. Yeah, five of them are um, arm bars. So, and with crazy you know timing too. Yeah, crazy timing too. Like within the first minute, within the first two minutes. I think her mm-hmm. very first one ever as, as a professional fighter was like fifty-five seconds in. So. That's her thing, yeah. which but, I said yesterday is very Ronda Rousey of her to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and Holly's like, I've been here before, so mm-hmm. we'll yes, see. She has. Mm-hmm. Yes, she has. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going Holly just too. Kinda sets the stage for her to uh, fight for the belt fight again. For the belt. Uh-huh. And then yeah. retire. That's enough, girl. That would be great. Like, if she mm-hmm. can beat Silva. Then fight um, Pena, Rocky, whatever. Yeah. Pena, fight Pena for the belt. Beat her. Call that girl goofy. She is, man. She is. Um, did beat you? Her. Did you? Did you actually listen to her shouting uh, during the Yair uh, match? No. Nah, okay. I, 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 I actually like. I turned her off. <laughs> Someone said I heard the screams of a banshee. I was like, "Come on, man." She was shouting some good, uh, good advice. I thought. I'm just. I'm not a fan of her. <laughs> Juliana. Persona. Yeah, she's. She's rough. I'm not she's a fan rough. Of her persona. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and corny at that. So you going Holly? I think that you know. I agree. I think that if Holly wins this, she should go ahead and fight for that vacant bantamweight belt. Get that belt back. Um, Why is that vacant? But, but like the featherweight still has a picture of Amanda. 
I don't know. That's stupid. Like the featherweight is damn near not a belt. I don't even know why that's even. I don't like, know. Like weight is empty. But featherweight, big old picture empty. of Amanda. Yeah, it, like I don't know. It's not empty. Well, featherweight, no, the roster. There's no one there. There's no one ranked. But Amanda's picture is right there. No, I no. I'm saying like that should be empty. Um, yeah. I don't know why they even have a picture there. I guess they just for, forgot to delete it. Um, Never let go, Jack. Never let go. So two other fights before we get out of here. Two other fights that I wanted to bring up. Um, one is John Jones uh, versus Stipe Miocic at MSG um, Madison Square Garden on November 11th. That was announced. I don't want it. Why? What's wrong with that fight? The greatest of know, all man. time versus the greatest heavyweight of all time? No? I mean, Not a fan. it's cool. It's cool. I, well, I'd rather him fight Stipe than, you know, go into the boxing world. Although, that'd be good for him. I don't Makes think he should money. go into the boxing world at all because uh, he can't box. But I was going to say, you can't throw elbows in there, sir. Well, uh, I say he can't box. He, can, he can box, but when it comes can, to boxing a boxer, he can't box. Um. So, yeah. The difference between striking and boxing, boxing. Big difference. I don't think he's there either, but I don't know. I don't really want to see him fight Stipe. It's, it's Stipe. It's not John. Um, no disrespect to Stipe, but I just thought he hung him up already. And, you know, you're, I was like, oh, it's like when someone leaves and they come back and you're like, I thought you were. No. I, you know what? And I think we'll see in this fight that mentally he did hang him up. He just didn't yeah. know it yet. Yeah. Didn't he, was his last fight uh, DC or um, Francis? Francis. And Francis. Yeah, you should have left him up. Should have left him up. Yeah. Now you're coming Fra- into. Francis allowed him to, to leave early. A much more difficult, um, you know, fight. It's a much more role. Like, he's well rounded. There's no. I don't even think I want to see Francis and John fight anymore. Well, we don't have to worry about that because that won't happen. But Francis is going to fight Tyson Fury. In good October. for him. Yeah, I'm happy for him. I, that's good. I've been wanting to see him. He's uh, just what's his display of boxing? Yeah, I'm. I'm very about. anxious to see how that turns out. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like as long as Tyson plays the long game game. Tyson's 6'9". Um, so he's going to um, have a, you know, the the reach advantage, I would assume. You might but, as well um, be talking to me about golf. I have no idea what happens in boxing. I know nothing. It's, they just throw hands. That's it. But, um, <laughs> and in golf, they, they just swing the ball. But like technique and shit, like I don't, I don't know fighters well, and history and when it comes to, like that. So. When it comes to distance control, like it's the same, except for you don't have to worry about kicks. So Tyson Fury is six foot nine and mm. Francis is six foot four. So there's going to be uh, some sort of okay. range difference. And then yeah. on top of that, Tyson is just a brilliant boxer. Brilliant as in his way of maneuvering uh, around the ring and doing all these things and cutting corners and all the technical stuff. Francis, maybe this Teddy is his first boxing match. Good. <laughs> so, Maybe Teddy Atlas is going to have a, a a really good breakdown of the. Of, Teddy Atlas is going to break down the shit out of this fight. He's going to know much. every <laughs> single angle, every thought, everything. I was so, going to say that he's going to be like, and at this point, this is where Francis is just going to blink. Okay, just going to yeah. blink. So, yeah, I'm excited to see that. Um, I, I don't know if you saw. I was watching uh, like the best boxing knockouts or something. The compilation. I, did, I saw that. Just to get me into it, because if it's just so, it's one dimensional. That's it. It's just hands, and that's all. So, well, I mean, there's a big fight coming up. You know, Terrence Crawford against Errol Spence. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, but that's not until at the end of the month. That's at the end of the month. Oh, that's in two weeks, dude. Mm-hmm. That's in two weeks. Yeah. For real, UFC does like make the year go by so fast. They do. They mm-hmm. do. By putting on yeah. so many things to look forward to, and then it just comes so fast. Like, yeah, and you just yeah. see it like whisk by, and you're like, "Oh shit, okay, wow." Like, dang, uh, shoot, Islam fought forever ago. 
Yeah. I know. Now I'm like, where is this dude? It's been a like long that. time. Hey, did it's you? Been a very long time. <laughs> did you see? Um, I thought about Connor. You know when he told Chandler, "Whistlers," talking about oh, yeah. the fighting in the apex. Um, but did you see this picture that Connor posted? Oh, him in the uh, in the, the, <laughs> in, the in the Versace thing. in the Versace. Um, <sighs> did this man get into the damn testing pool? I don't know what he's doing with his life. No. Um, so the answer is no. Good. So not, Chandler not doesn't have of. a fight this year. Chandler does not have a fight at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I follow Chandler. Um, <laughs> That's you know, messed up, man. I'm on his channel, and I see him breaking down other people's fights. Oh, I haven't and, seen that. You know, huh. yeah, I'm yeah over, he I'm breaks down fights. Hanging and out with Henry Cejudo. It's like, dude, you know, I, I want to see you at the top, but I don't think that you're leaving the house at this point because you got to wait for Connor to tell you that you can leave and go fight somebody. It's like you're tied up. Hmm. It, it so sucks. you're saying Dana has never waived for anyone uh, the need to to test or whatever. Yeah, he did once. I mean, and it's not even a him. It's a Usada. They they waived it once and they got sued. So they waited for it. So now they can waive it in certain situations. For instance, I'll give you one that just happened. Person that we talked about earlier, Val. Val was not a part of the USADA testing pool because he wasn't in the UFC. But because of the situation, they gave him a special exemption. He was able to, you know, do those tests, pass them, and be able to fight. So situations like that where it's a short notice replacement, they will do that. Connor, on the other hand, they're not going to give him that kind of leeway because they... Has he been too loud about it, if anything? And he's been here for a long time. They know what you're doing. Yeah, they, they, they know what you're doing. God, and in in reality, way, they're they're just giving you time to get off of whatever it is that you're on. So yeah, pretty much him and uh, Colby, by the way, who finally, finally, Leon agreed to fight. So, um, I think that of Colby for real. It's, it's been such a long on time. Some sort of performance. Yeah, for sure. Why would we oh. think Connor is and Colby isn't like? Well, we could see the difference in Connor. Time. We don't see we don't see Colby enough to to know. Fair enough. We see him every once in a while, but we don't see him like we see Connor. Yeah, but Connor is on the beach doing freaking sun salutations <laughs> with his freaking Vienna sausages <laughs> hanging out. Like, bruh. Dude, I noticed that too. I was like, why am I even looking at this? This is not he good. He got it right in the camera. Sun, sun like, salutations. Yeah, that was weird. That's weird. That's hilarious. Oh my <laughs> dude! And he got the hat on that he, the Tom Sawyer joint that he got. Um, what was it from the? It was from a bet from another fight. You remember when he he posted that he and he had all these bags in the other room, and uh, oh the, yes, that's he the won same bet, so he was shopping. Yeah, same. I like the like the video where he like shaved the bottom of his uh, beard. He had just like oh, the yeah. handlebar things, and he was like, <laughs> like boy, you, gave a Zoolander look. Like, boy, you like a damn fool! What are you doing? <laughs> Stop! I'm dying Stop it. sun salutations. I'm I'm excited. I'm ready for him to come back. To be honest, like. I just want like, him to come back. Just get a fight schedule. Just fight, fight dude. Schedule. Yeah, just fight. Cause, fight. Because your little tough situation is exactly what it is. Real, yeah, looking real tough. tough. Yeah. It's, oh, man. Him falling to his knees. I, I like that. I like seeing that from him, you know? That was hilarious. It was also hilarious. But <clears throat> wait, D's pregnant? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, oh Devlin? Yeah, she's she, you know, she's always pregnant. He keeps her pregnant. Oh, she is so beautiful. It's like like a Twinkie. I don't know. <laughs> Meaning she looks good, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's that's a new 
that's a new term. Oh, I, I see the hat. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. He's funny. He's going to come back soon. We we'll love we'll him. Love to hate him, I guess. Sometimes, sometimes. I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I, I appreciate I think he's, what Connor is. Yeah, I think but he's a great fighter. I, but I but I don't appreciate him holding up somebody's career like he's holding up. Yeah, that's fucked up. I didn't like that. That's messed up. Jalen's I mean, a good and, dude. And then keep in mind that Jalen, or not Jalen, but uh, Michael Chandler is 36 years old. Yeah. Like, we can't do this forever. And that's, and that's a tough division. Like, he'd be fighting for Ziv right now. Mm-hmm. Shit, mm-hmm. that's a good And fight. that would be a a freaking crazy fight. Yeah. Um, but, but, and I forgot to say, uh, dream come true fight, if all the stars align. This is another uh, tinfoil hat. But an, another great fight would be, what's his name? Uh, Volkanovski and... Uh, Busy. Oh yeah, yeah. You've been angling for that one. If the stars align, you know. All right, it's time for a snack. It is about that time. I'm very hungry. Um, I've not eaten since earlier, so yeah, since breakfast, yeah. since French toast sticks. Yeah. That's why I probably called. That's why I'm seeing Twinkies. <laughs> All right. Uh, Twinkies and French toast sticks. All right. Um, so, yeah, this was a good one. Um, this was long. It's 446. I know. That I means know. we're not coming out. Uh, we're go- I'm going back in the hiatus until uh, Dustin and, Ju- and, and Justin and all mm-hmm. that. No, I, I can't um, have some more uh, elite um five you know greatest of whatever division and then going to end it on the top 10 um UFC fighters of all time oh okay so, okay that's cool make sure uh who did i say volk is up there volk is in the top 10 yeah and amanda now, now Stop where playing games amanda is also in the top 10 Oh, okay. Can't I thought the, she wasn't. Can't your be the greatest team. woman, uh, female. You're just saying of all, of all time. time. Not, you're not saying you're not saying your personal of all time. No, I am saying my personal oh, okay. top ten. All of these are my personal. All of them are my personal. Not what okay. other people say or anything like that. What I think is the top five of every division and then of all time. Okay. So that's that's cool. I'll do a snippet, it'll be real quick too. I'll just name it. And that's it. <laughs> you get that show then. All right. Go get some, okay. some snacks. Snack time. All right, y'all. Um, Bye. If you stayed until the end, you should get some sort of prize. And I don't know what that is because I'm not paying for it. But, we can um, send some snacks. We can send some snacks. Yes. <laughs> if you're still here, um, drop a comment and we'll send you some snacks. How about that? <laughs> <laughs>